Farm Day of Farm. Today is day one of field prep day. So you're gonna see later in the video some things that we filmed a little bit out of order to prepare to plant, but today we are tilling. So first up, we are going to remove the silage tarp that we had laid down kind of towards the end of February. And I have a video of us laying down the silage tarp in February and it's just been sitting for almost three months now, two and a half months, hopefully killing some at least of the grass in the outer field that we have. So we're gonna get the drone up in the sky so we can see the big reveal. We're gonna pull the silage tarp back. We're gonna fold it up and get it out of the way. Then my husband's gonna go around and he's gonna edge around the silage tarp because we couldn't get our mower that close to the tarp. So it's gonna end up being pretty high on the side. So we're gonna edge it and then we're gonna get tilling. After we till at least the first pass, we're going to identify where my planting rows are and where the walkways are. And once we know where the planting rows are, we're gonna end up dumping all of those compost bags that we use to weigh the silage tarp down. We did it that way because we thought that would be a good financial use instead of buying sandbags, which is totally possible. We bought the compost bags, and now that the silage tarp is up, we are gonna use it, we're gonna dump it out in the planting rows, and then when Eric goes through with the tractor, again, he's gonna till that compost in. And so in probably a little bit less than a week, this field is gonna be perfect and fluffy and ready for flowers. So let's get it done. What do the youth do? Did I dab correctly? Tip the tractor for this. <laughs> Whoa, mommy, I have to be careful.
Okay, so today we are prepping the flower field for planting. And so that includes laying drip irrigation, burning the landscape fabric and laying it down with landscape staples and testing the system, putting my rows in order because I have some plants that want six inches, nine inches and 12 inches. Dad. <laughs> you can go take it. No. Okay. That's correct. <laughs> so we got our drip lines from Drip Depot because we needed a lot. So it would have been uh, way more expensive if you went to like a Lowe's or an Ace and bought retail. So we went to Drip Depot. We bought... Quantity? Yeah. Like how much 40, did we need? 4,100 feet of drip tape. Okay. So that's for two fields that are 60 by well, 30. Well, it's like two fields plus. We need okay. about 1,000 feet per okay. field. So I wanted feet. to just buy extra. Okay. For oh, errors, for errors and other errors issues. and other fields <laughs> in time. <laughs> for 500 errors. feet of three quarter inch. Tubing. Main tubing. Okay. Some zone meters, cause we're just gonna hook it up to garden hoses. Yep, to run different zones. Right. So, but we've never done it before. Yeah, we've never done this before, but we're trying to think logically that we need to lay out the drip irrigation first. You can't put the landscape fabric down first because the lines need to run under the fabric, but because like I said, I'm doing six inches, nine inches and 12 inches. We wanna make sure the lines are running down the field in a way that will maximize the efficient watering system for the plants and it'll really get close to their roots. So we, we kind of prepped all the lines, we cut them, we capped them, but now we're gonna burn the landscape fabric. And so we can figure out exactly like on the six inch spacing row, do we wanna bring the lines in a little tighter or put them farther out to the edge? We wanna think through that before we just commit to one way for all of the rows and can't really replace it because we punched into the main line. So we're figuring out as we go. Yeah, we're taking it a step at a time. What's the phrase? Crawl, walk, run before you get going. So we're still crawling. We're crawling. Feels like we're crawling. It's 2 p.m. I'm hot. Yeah, well, they sent me a, a punch that didn't seem to be matched, so I'm having to do a different way to punch in, but we also need the landscape fabric to help us. Yeah, so let's burn. Kind of it. set it right. So let's we'll, do it. we'll do the first one and go from there. All right. What's the best, wh what's the best way? I lost my mic. Is that the B-roll you wanted? Exactly. Just kick it up. I lost my mic. Is that the B-roll you wanted? Exactly. I mean, we're talking about a nice no wind day here, so. Okay. So you do the first one. I'm scared of fire. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it's hanging. It's hanging on the tractor, isn't it? Yeah, it's behind Dad. Yeah. Daddy, ready for this? Standard tractor tool right here. Okay, here we go. We're getting the fire torch. Sound effects. I can't do this. You have to do all of this. No. <gasps> Not when I'm that close to it. Camera. Practice run. Don't do like a like super burn into the grass. Just see how fast that was. We'll set our field on fire. Please don't set a field fire. Should we not do it this way? Probably should do it on the dirt, but.
finished the field. We finished the flower field. We've been talking a lot about the production field, the flower field. We've talked about it a lot in our other videos in theory, but now we actually have it. It has been tilled, it has been drip irrigated, and now the landscape fabric holes are burned and it is all stapled down and ready for planting. It was way more work than I thought. I knew all the steps intellectually. I had watched it be done from other flower farmers and on YouTube. I knew the steps and what we needed to do, but actually getting in there and doing it was way more than I thought. It took hours, it took multiple days to get it done. So note to self, projects really do tend to take longer than you think. But we got better as we went. We learned some things as we went. Our process and system got a little smoother or at least we adapted it from other people's models to fit what, we're, what our conditions are here and what we're trying to do here. So there were definitely adjustments made. One of the biggest adjustments is in our hole burning and I'll bring you in closer and show you some of those changes. I have three foot growing beds and three foot walkways. You can do three foot, you can do four feet, you can do two and a half foot walkways, you can do four feet walkways. There are pros and cons to all these distances, but when we made the template, we wanted to maximize, in our view, the amount of growing space in each three foot wide row. And we started that when we actually got here, got our hands dirty. You can see this was our six inch template, which you saw earlier in the video. And it just was too close to the edge. I mean, this is the edge right here, and this is the hole. Now it's not ripped. It could be ripped. It is very, very close. And I just got nervous with how close it was to the edge here, either in the, the fabric itself ripping or not being able to have sufficient overlap with the walkway to really keep the grass out and not have everything creeped through. So we adjusted midway and we turned the template vertical instead of horizontal and we stopped doing the two outer holes. And so that's why it looks a little different here. And now I have way more space on my edges, which made me feel a little bit more comfortable. So that was definitely a lesson learned. So in these rows, all of them, I have 12 inch, six inch, nine inch spacing, but each row got three lines of drip tape. This is gonna be an experiment. We thought that four lines was just overdoing it a bit, but I will be curious once I get planted, if the drip is sufficient to reach these outer guys, or if I end up needing to do some spot watering, we'll see. But as I keep saying in my videos, there's so much experimenting going on and that's okay. Some things will work, some things won't, but we're learning and I do think we'll get better as we go. So it took a long time. It really is the summation of all of this. <laughs> it's a lot of work, but I am just so excited to get in here and get planting and hopefully start seeing things grow and not just have a giant black rectangle forever. I am so ready to get out here with all of my seedlings that I've been growing inside for a couple months now and my seeds that I'm going to direct sow and fill this giant space with gorgeous summer color and flowers to give away to friends, to sell, to tour and show everyone. So come back in a future video and see exactly what I have planned for this space and plants actually going in the ground. Flopping around, I was like, I should probably get that. He's tilled. <laughs> <laughs> He's tilled. <laughs> <laughs>